Jenny with On Fire Fit, and welcome to another episode of High Heel Hallelujah. Today I am talking about why we do not need to fear. But first, let's look at the shoes. This is a heel my husband got me from Gwen Stefani's brand, Lamb. And I know that I have posted pictures of these before and people have not always been big fans of them, but I do like them. They remind me, and somebody help me please, what the type of shoe this is. It's kind of like a man's wingtip shoe, but in a female version, I guess, just because of the detail in the stitching. Anyway, that's what it makes me think of, but I do love them. They actually are kind of high, not always the easiest to walk in, but I do like them. And I got these many years ago, so I don't even think they're available anymore. But yeah, those are the shoe of the day. I think we have come to understand that most anxiety comes about because of fear, one sort of fear or another. And fear is based in not knowing what is to come. And so we tend to have some anxiety over that. And those fears that we have can sometimes cripple us. They can sometimes make us feel uh, inadequate or like we can't move forward in our life. And there is a good reason why we don't need to fear. Or if we do fear, how to quickly get over that fear by an attitude adjustment. So I will notice at times that I still have fear, but I've gotten to where I understand it a little bit quicker. And I also realize that I have a lot of history that backs up my ability to overcome current fears and move forward more quickly. So I think we all know that we're not gonna get away without, uh, without ever being afraid. Sometimes we have to move forward in certain areas of our life even though we do have a fear. And of course it's based in all different kinds of things. And you can take this any number of areas or issues in your life. But for me, what I have noticed is that my experience has made a big difference in how I approach my situations today and how I will approach them in the future. And I'm gonna give you a couple of my own personal examples because I love when I'm reading in a book or hearing other people talk, I love to hear their real life experiences it helps me to kind of get a better grip on what they mean by what they're saying. And so I'm just gonna give you a couple of my examples. I'm sure you have plenty of your own. I would love to hear about those. But I am going to start off talking a bit about the floods that we have had in our house. So we had gone into this, this house that we're in now from a smaller home. And when we moved into this current home, it needed a lot of work and we had done some renovations and neither my husband nor I are handy. So we pretty much hire everything out and also don't always know how to double check the people that are doing the work because not knowing how things should be done properly, you have to put your trust into their hands and whatnot. Well, the first go around of renovations Everything seemed to be fine, but some time went by and it turned out that one of the things that they had done was put in new baseboards in the bathroom and they used too long of a nail, which had gone into a pipe and over time that had eroded and we had our bedroom where we are right here now flooded out and because of how it seeped into other parts of the house, everything had to get torn out everything had to be redone. We had to have mold remediation. We had to have all the testing to make sure that all the mold was out so that if we ever tried to sell the house. So it felt like a big deal and it was. And we had all of that taken care of. We were 
finally back in the, our house, we had to go live with my mom for a while and we had another issue. So when they did all this work on our house, the people that actually did the fixing of the job did not hook up our shower to the drain. So unbeknownst to us, the water was pouring down into the walls and out into the wood floors. And I could see something was going weird with the floors. They were starting to warp, but we didn't know until the water started coming up out of the floors. So here I am, I am pregnant with our son, I am ready to deliver and we've got this going on. And it just felt so overwhelming at the time. We get all of that stuff fixed and then right after all of that's fixed and we have been living with my mom again, we have a, what they called, well, they called it a slab leak. It was a, a Thing that went on out in the garage and it actually seeped into the rest of our house. That one put us into a hotel for three months. So the reason that I'm bringing all of this up is because I found that through the first go around with this, I just treated those struggles like just a horrible thing that I had to get over. And then when I came around to the third flood, we were living in a hotel for three months. It occurred to me how God was using these situations to make me a better person, how to think differently, how to look for silver linings, all of this kind of stuff. We had a lot going on during that three months that I was back and forth from the hotel to our house, trying to navigate and watch for things. But during that last flood that we had had, a lot of amazing things actually happened. So one thing was the time before when the wood floors had been put in, they were not put in properly. I had done, after that, I did a whole bunch of research on how they should have been put in because in one of the rooms, the way the guy installed the floor, it felt like you were going uphill and it was not done right. And so we were really frustrated by that, but there wasn't anything we could do because the, it would have been a big small claims court issue. So we got that corrected during the third flood when they had to tear out the floors again. Always these little things. So here we were living in this hotel and it was summer and it was a really hot summer. And we blasted that air conditioning in that hotel room we had three TVs in a hotel room where we have one TV at home. <laughs> we got breakfast every day that was downstairs. They had happy hour. The kids had a pool right outside. And at the time, you're looking at the whole thing as a big disruption. But when we kind of looked at it from the standpoint of the blessings that were coming about, it kind of changed that perspective. And so when people say to me, aren't you afraid of something bad happening again because you've had these bad things happen? I can't say that I have that fear anymore because I've seen how God has worked good through those situations. He may not have wanted those things to happen, but he still turned them into good things. We got our floors corrected. We got a blessing of a really kind of vacation like summer in a way and it all kind of happened without us looking for it or asking for it there were multiple other things along the way that are in that same vein but i really think that the perspective changes exactly everything in your life so that you have more of a hope for the future versus a fear of what might be to come my other example has to do with my belly surgeries and i'm sure you've heard this a lot from me but it really ties into this topic because i've had years and years and years of digestive problems and only when i after i had my son so i mean for 20 plus years 
they didn't really know what my problem was. They always would call it like irritable bowel, but it really was not because everything I tried to do that they recommended did not help. And it turned out that a doctor did a special test and found out that my colon actually is reversed. And because of that, it's not something I did to myself. It was something that just is part of who I am. It finally just got a weak spot and it, it blew apart. And so my intestine was disconnected and I had a colostomy bag and everything. And that whole scenario where people would say that's the like worst thing that could possibly happen. And yes, that was my biggest fear years ago. I found out something that completely changed me. And that is my stillness during all those recoveries through all those three surgeries, God was there during my biggest fears, during my deepest, darkest moments, I got such a stronger sense of who God is and what kind of love he has for me. I don't know that I could have experienced that had I not gone through that kind of a difficulty or a deep, dark area. And it only comes through those situations sometimes because when everything is going along, humming along, just whatever, mediocre, or even things are going great, you're not really diving deeper into, God, what are you trying to do? Where is the hope in this? You're not looking for that because everything's just sort of going along. And when you do fall into those areas or you've dug yourself into those areas, because I've done that too, then you find out that you really don't have anything to fear because even in your deepest fear and even in your deepest, darkest time, God is there. And so when you look forward into your future, it's like, I don't have anything to worry about. God was with me during all of those things. In fact, my relationship with him is stronger than ever. I am more on fire. I have more passion. I have a, it's like a funnel. All of a sudden, everything just narrows down and you know what you need to do. And when people will try to tell me, oh, you should be doing this or you should be doing that or you should, everybody has an opinion. I already have funneled down into my purpose because I have been in places where I realize I can't live on the surface. I can't live in that zone because that's not what all of this has brought me to. And the trust and the hope that you get just erases that fear. And so there are still times in my life that in my day, I'll come across something that creates and stirs up some fear and anxiety. But I quickly remember that I have this hope that I get to see what God's going to do. I get to see how he's going to move. And I look forward expectantly to that. And I'm like excited to see what's God going to do in this situation? How is he going to make this even better? Or maybe somebody else will be affected by it. Or maybe I'll get a stronger sense of my purpose. Or maybe I get to help somebody through something. Or whatever the case is, we have that assurance. And I, of course, am going to tie in the Bible verse that a lot of people already know and I've used before. But it is so perfect because this is exactly what it means. It comes from Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Let me say that again and emphasize, we know that all things, all, work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So that means the good things, the bad things, the things that feel like they don't mean much of anything, all things can work for good. And that is how you see the scenarios of your past and how you cannot be worried about the things of the future. And to me, it gives me a fire in my belly to go and do my purpose because I don't need to fear what's to come. I just need to do what I know God has called me to do for today. And everybody can kind of figure out their own thing, but I know what I need to do. And that is the joy that he gives. And so I hope that 
you hear what I'm saying to you today, you have maybe a situation you're going through. God wants to make good come out of it. And I would encourage you to watch for his signs and how he takes care of things. Rely on him and trust in him. Not have the anxiety and the fear. He will give you his spirit, which allows you to take steps. So we're not here sitting back waiting for him just to do everything. We are partnering with his Holy Spirit to take those steps forward. And in fact, the verses that lead up to that say, in the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness because we do not even know what we're supposed to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groaning. So you don't even need to know exactly what you need for taking those steps. The Spirit will do that for you. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit even gives us what we are to do, and then he assists us and walks with us as we do it. So I encourage you to think about whatever you might be having a fear, anxiety, or stress about, and look for how God wants you to take some steps forward, and look for how he's going to use even the difficulties of your life to shape you, grow you, um, mold you, make you more useful for some reason. And you're gonna notice that that changes your perspective and it gets you excited. So I hope that that helps you today. I would love to hear from you. If you have not already subscribed, I would love for you to do that. If you like this kind of video, if you don't mind giving it a thumbs up so that I know that this is a video series that I should continue. And in every area of your life, I hope that you are living your life on fire. I decided to take my walk outside today so that I would not have a problem with digging that heel down into the sidewalk <laughs> instead of trying to avoid my heel going into the wood floors. So hopefully this is a little bit better, but I hope that you enjoy this kind of video. Thanks for sticking around.